So my name is Michael Jones. I am the president of uh, Team A Blue Tech. Uh, welcome to our Blue Tech Global Connect. Uh, as of this morning, we had a hundred and what was the number you said? Thirty, Melissa or Shara? Hundred and thirty, I yep, think. One thirty was the That's, registration number. Had signed up. We'll hopefully see at least half of those <laughs> coming on. Um, so uh, this is a monthly webinar series to promote really the global uh, blue tech ecosystem. Our goal is to bring three really innovative companies from three dis different countries each month. Uh, please, as you look forward, um, be aware of our upcoming uh, themes. So today, of course, is offshore renewables. Uh, August will be, be, be big data. Uh, September will be water wastewater. And most of you, I think, know that we are a blue tech uh, cluster and for us it's uh, the whole water cycle so water wastewater as well as ocean tech october will be aquaculture and biomarine uh, november is our blue tech week uh, but of course there will be a series of things after that including plastics cleanup marine debris um, ocean observation you know, will be a number of interesting topics going forward i think you all uh, already know about our purpose um, our presenters are small to medium sized companies, not exactly startups, but people that are expansion mode. And as we say, if it's wet, it's blue. Uh, typically every month we start at 745, brief introduction. We ask a um, somebody that we think is an expert in this field to uh, spend about five minutes talking about what they're doing and why this is an important field. I then got to kick it off. Uh, we were doing something a little different today in that we're going to have, uh, which we have done in the past, 10 minute presentations from three companies. Um, what we were finding is we were losing a lot of people to go into the breakout rooms. It was a little too difficult. Um, and of course, we had people in Europe that was uh, it was dinner time. So we decided that we were going to tighten it. So three 10 minute presentations and then a roundtable discussion, which our moderator, uh, Jason Bush, our good friend, will be uh, moderating. So next slide, please. Um, since I have a captive audience for a minute, uh, Blue Tech Week uh, will be virtual. Um, you can see the kind of the structure of this. Uh, hopefully, all of our presenters over the Blue Tech Global Connects will all be involved, but many other companies. Uh, last year, we had uh, 686 people across five of excuse me, seven events in five days. That obviously was was physical or um, in person. Um, we, of course, don't know how many we'll have this year, but we had over 150 companies and investor groups uh, that were there, and we hopefully will exceed that because people won't have to travel to San Diego to participate. So uh, lots of interesting uh, areas of, of that we will be focusing on, but if you are interested, please let us know topics. Uh, if you want to exhibit, we'll have... Um, a demo day on Monday with a, a military and Coast Guard from various countries, and then Wednesday, Thursday is our traditional virtual exhibits day as well. Next, please. So just a quick announcement for everybody. Uh, Team A Blue Tech went together with three European, European partners, partners, the Air Center, Center. and, and uh, uh, Resource. I'm going to go off for a second, come back on. I started to get some echo. Uh, so the Air Center in the Azores, Portugal, Porto Marciano is the national cluster of Portugal, and Plocan, which is the uh, one of the leading um, uh, clusters in uh, in Spain, in the Canary Islands. We have put together or are putting together a robotics testing course, a very long distance, where no place is too far out of land to be able to go uh, pick up the vessel if it uh, gets disabled for some reason. Um, but we're getting quite a bit of interest from navies, uh, from NOAA, from from um, uh, the, the National Oceanography Center in the UK, um, and others that I think will work with us. Yesterday, I, I heard the European Commission was quite interested. So this is a new effort. Um, if you're doing anything related to um, autonomy and vessels and ocean observation, uh, hopefully you'll talk to us about that. This is very much in formation. And as it says there, we're looking for partners and supporters. Next, please. So our team, I love this picture because it makes everybody look so thin, particularly me. Um, everybody else is thin. Uh, so we have a great team and, and really it's because of them that we could put on the events we put on, including this one today. Next, please. 
So we're not a broker dealer. We want you to know that. So hopefully some of you will say, wow, that's an incredible company. Either you will invest as an angel investor or you work with a fund or you know somebody who is with a fund. We hope you will look seriously at these incredible companies and maybe invest, but we take no responsibility uh, because we're not a broker dealer. Next, please. So I think you all know this because we make it uh, very clear. If you registered for this event, uh, you are now on our emailing list. You will receive it. We use constant contact. If you decide you want to opt out, it's very easy to do. So welcome to you that are, are new. We've been actually adding probably 30 almost every week uh, of people that I would say are interested in Blue Tech Global Connect uh, as well as Blue Tech Week. Next, please. So we're working with Microsoft Teams. We were using Zoom, but our, our uh, government partners um, cannot use Zoom. Uh, so please make sure you're on mute and turn your camera off during presentations. Uh, use the chat conversation function for questions to presenters, and they will get to those. Uh, in this case, um, uh, it will be um, our moderator who will be looking at those and has his own questions as well. So make sure that you do put your your questions into the, the chat feature. Next, please. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce Jason Bush. We've known Jason for a number of years. Uh, he's got some exciting, I think, news to, to, to share in terms of a program that they're running. But Jason is one of those people that has really dedicated himself to promoting renewable ocean energy, and we're pleased to have him as a partner. So, Jason, over to you. Thank you, Michael, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, very pleased to be here this morning. I'm going to uh, now attempt the very risky maneuver of sharing my screen. Let's see if we can make that smooth. Did that work? So people seeing my uh, PowerPoint presentation? We are. Uh, for some reason, it's showing up as a Okay, well, we're just going to make that work. Um, so, uh, good morning, and uh, we certainly want to start by thanking uh, Michael Jones and, uh, and and the great team at the Maritime Alliance who asked me to uh, to moderate this panel today on on marine renewable energy, a, a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I am the executive director of the Pacific Ocean Energy Trust, POET. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit um, located out of Portland, Oregon. Um, and our mission is to promote the responsible development of marine renewable energy, uh, which we have been doing since 2007. So happy to step in today and, and moderate this, uh, this panel of three great companies reflecting, I think, both uh, a geographically diverse set of companies as well as a nice array of, of different approaches to the marine hydrokinetic sector. Uh, as we'll see when we get into it. So with that, I'm going to take just a few minutes to make a, uh, some some early sort of background comments, and we'll get right into the three presentations. Um, so just to be clear, we are talking about marine hydrokinetics, which generally includes tidal energy, wave energy, ocean currents, and we include thermal exchange, ocean thermal exchange, OTEC, even though technically it's not marine hydrokinetic, um, but it's part of the family. And... Um, uh, so th these are these are the uh, types of technologies we're talking about today. I want to be uh, a little clear that I think in general we're still looking, especially from the utility scale perspective, that marine renewable energy is still a pre-commercial technology. Uh, worldwide, there's probably less than 100 megawatts of installed capacity. I think most of that is tidal. Um, I do think that, especially in the case of tidal, that we are on the cusp of uh, commercializing that sector. And as we'll see further through this presentation and, and the other presenters' uh, talks today, uh, you'll see that there are a number of emerging markets for marine hydrokinetic technologies besides the utility sector that I think are very viable and provide both wonderful ends and of themselves for markets as well as stepping stones to, to the utility sector. I, I think that as we've seen over the last several years, the, uh, the technologies are starting to accelerate as we begin to uh, zero in on the second and third generation technologies uh, and figuring out uh, ever uh, more efficient and effective ways to, to extract energy from the ocean. This has been largely a European and U.S. based sector to date, though clearly there are companies emerging from around the world. I think they will continue to expand 
Um, and I uh, will finish this background on this to say that as far as utility scale markets for say wave energy in particular, I think that the offshore wind sector, especially the floating offshore wind sector may complicate that conversation a bit. Uh, when you have 15 megawatt floating platforms that can go 15, 20, 30, 40 miles from shore, uh, uh, I, I think that uh, that's going to be a, a tough, um, a tough um, uh, market to, to, to play in for the marine hydrokinetic sector. In the United States, uh, it is largely and historically has been a conversation and uh, in a, in a, in a market that's been driven by support from the U.S. Department of Energy's Water Power Technology Office. Um, this office has been around for several years and its budget has continued to grow. Uh, in, uh, currently, it's about $148 million, and we have seen some significant growth over the last few years. Um, the marine hydrokinetic sector is, is I think, very dependent uh, on the Water Power Technology Office. They function a bit like a, uh, a venture capital firm for these companies that are uh, perhaps in this middle area, the so-called valley of death, where it's, um, as they as they iterate their technologies, uh, uh, getting getting these projects into the water is very expensive proposition, and the and the uh, help from the federal government as well as from governments around the world has been absolutely essential to the development of, of this sector. Uh, one uh, uh, major new investment in the United States is the Pack Wave test site, which is will be located off of Newport, Oregon. Um, that project is essentially through the permitting process at this point. I know they're getting very close to ordering cables and beginning installation, but that will be the nation's first uh, uh, in-water wave energy uh, test site for what I, what, I, what I refer to as fully energetic test site. In other words, facing the, the full brunt of the Pacific Ocean wave swells. So when that's uh, operational, that will be a major new asset here in the United States. I think it, it's, I alluded to this a bit earlier. Um, historically, this, this was all a talk, all a conversation about utility markets. I think that's changing in a very big way. Um, I think if you look to the, uh, the recent uh, publication of Powering the Blue Economy, that was uh, that was uh, funded by the Water Power Program. Uh, this is a major new document. I think that indicates a. Uh, a great shift in thinking and approach to the marine hydrokinetic sector. Uh, you can find that uh, report easily online at that link there that you're seeing now, as well as uh, simply by um, Googling uh, powering the blue economy. Uh, this has become so dominant now as an acronym PBE sectors, powering the blue economy sectors, including things like aquaculture, desalinization, uh, powering remote communities, ocean observation, seawater mining, and, and others. Um, but I do think that uh, it, it, it needs to be clear that this is not an either or situation, not a binary situation that we're in where we're either talking about utility or uh, PBE markets. I think that there's a, a, a synergistic relationship there. And I think that uh, developing technologies on a smaller scale will benefit the utility scale uh, as we refine our approaches and, and um, grow our experience with deployments. I want to finish by a brief look at a new program called TEAMER, the Testing Expertise and Access for Marine Energy Research. Uh, this is an excellent new program the U.S. Department of Energy Pro uh, Water Power Technology Office has implemented. Uh, they selected my organization, Pacific Ocean Energy Trust, to administer this new program. Uh, it's a three-year testing campaign to provide access to uh, U.S. marine energy testing facilities and technical expertise to assist with numerical modeling, data collection, and operational and stream conditions. Uh, the, the reason this, I think, is a, is a game changer is because historically, uh, all, all, pretty much all the funding that has come out of the water program has been uh, made available through a traditional FOA or funding opportunity announcement, which is a very heavy lift for any applicant, both for the Department of Energy to set it up as well as for the applicants to go after it. Uh, Teamer has changed all of this. We're going to be able to put out, uh, we hope, over 100 funding opportunities over the course of the next three years. It's a $16 million program. Uh, we will have a list of 20, at least 20 uh, facilities that are pre-approved that can provide these services, including the national labs, as well as a number of universities. 
and potentially some private facilities around the country. Um, you can go to the Teamer website. If you Google Teamer or just reach out to Poet, we're happy to give you more information. The, the door is open right now for the first round of funding. Certainly won't be the last. We'll have these on a, on a regular basis for the next three years. So let me stop there and uh, turn this back over to, to Michael Jones. Jason, thank you very much. That was a great introduction. Um, if our slides will come back up, I'll just finish off and then we will get started.